So firstly, thanks for coming um, midweek <laughs> Wednesday, and we're excited to have you all on board. Um, so I'd like to start off by introducing myself. Uh, I'm Lakshmi Sashadri. I'm the CEO founder of Mom Power 360. So I'm a mother of three. I live here in Florida with my husband and my three kids and a beautiful dog. <laughs> And we also have Dr. Anup Kumar, who is an emergency room physician, and um, Shrisha, who is a co-founder with Dr. Kumar. Um, and they do this wonderful thing called the Health Revolution. Um, and we're going to get into more details about that. And so today we'll be discussing about body, mind, and soul reboot, especially for moms, because we are constantly doing so many things and sometimes we feel scattered um, and we need that extra motivation and push. And we figured there won't be any better person than Dr. Kumar, who is constantly in and out, you know, seeing patients who come to him when they're already in there, you know, when they need help, when the health's breaking loose. Um, so Dr. Kumar, welcome and Shrisha, welcome. So let's talk about, um, you know, the four engines that you focus on. So I'll let Dr. Anoop take over. Sure, I'll give a, I'll kind of give a, a few brief points and then maybe we can have a conversation about it because I know mm -hmm. it's something that is meaningful to a lot of people. And yes, I am in and out of the ER. I was just there a few hours ago, uh, late mm -hmm. last night. Okay. Um, and you know, what I see Lakshmi actually in the ER uh, that may surprise people is that what I found is that the things we see in the ER, whether they're heart attacks or strokes, uh, now what we call, you know, mental illness, right? We talk about anxiety or we talk about depressed mood, things like this. Mm -hmm. the, the things that that lead to those or the things that affect those are the same things that are important in our daily lives, even right. though that's the emergency condition, right? right? So it's like, that's when everything kind of goes wrong over and over and over in a way, then mm -hmm. it becomes an emergency and then you end up in the ER. Mm -hmm. um, but what the four engines are about are, mm -hmm. they answer the question, what mm -hmm. can I do? Mm -hmm. And that doesn't matter if this person is in the ER, if mm -hmm. they're just struggling with something in their lives, mm -hmm. if they're a mom, you know, who's stressed, who has a lot of things on your plate. I know my wife also has a lot of things on her plate. I'm not mm -hmm. a mother of three. I'm a father of one, but yeah. you know, I understand <laughs> well, I have a mother and of course my wife also, mm -hmm. um, or if a person is interested in, in general wellness and, or performance, how you perform at work, how you perform at home, however you want to look at it in right. athletics, in scholastics, mm -hmm. um, or even if spiritual insight, right? Spiritual mm -hmm. development, mm -hmm. wherever you look at the spectrum, it's these mm -hmm. four engines. That's what's so powerful about this. And those four right. engines are nutrition, movement, connection, and rest. Right. And it's very fundamental, but then it's so often like we tend to ignore those yeah. and because we're so busy and we're not really consciously focusing on that and not realizing how much it impacts us in the long run or how we feel, you know, how, our, how we function. All of that is interlinked. So you said, three, four things, right? Nutrition, moment, connection, rest. So let's get into nutrition, um, yes. especially like for us moms, because, you know, whether especially it's a new mom um, who is breastfeeding and there's so much demand on the body or even an older mom who is probably almost getting to menopause phase or even the one who's hustling. Um, nutrition is such a key key factor. And as mothers, the first instinct is to focus on our children and make sure that we give a nice platter for them and make sure they're fed. But when it comes to us, we tend to eat off the leftover, you yeah. know, like right. scavenge out of it or, right. you know, so um, right. that's something that you could talk about. Like right. with nutrition, what are the key things that we need to focus on? Yeah. I mean, that's such a good point. You know, when, when the baby is inside you growing inside you before the baby meets the rest of the world mm -hmm. it's your nutrition is the baby's nutrition mm -hmm. so, and obviously directly through the umbilical cord there's a mm -hmm. direct connection but even after they right. separate from the umbilical cord mm -hmm. it is still your nutrition through the breast milk number one but then mm -hmm. also through your choices right mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. one of the things uh we forget 
um, and getting to nutrition is that nutrition is there of the body, but also nutrition of the mind. Right. You know, like, for example, what I just said, just understanding that my nutrition is the baby's nutrition, whether mm -hmm. they're in utero, whether they are just born mm -hmm. and breastfeeding, even at age five, mm -hmm. age six, mm -hmm. like how, what we do as parents is what our children do. So that's nutrition right. of the mind. That clarity mm -hmm. is important. And right. then from a body perspective, from the actual mm -hmm. food that we're eating, mm -hmm. there's so much advice on what we yeah. should eat. Right. I mean, there are exactly. hundred. I mean, it's like you go on Instagram and Pinterest and yeah. lots of people are doing that. And yeah, yeah. It's clutter. But I feel yeah. like the basic things that they need to focus on, fresh yeah. vegetables, fruits, grains, right. fibers. Right. And, and I think mm -hmm. and I think moms, I think there's a lot of marketing out there, you yeah. know, that's targeting moms because your body changes, obviously, during pregnancy and after pregnancy. And there's so many societal pressures that, you know, you understand much better than I do. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's the key is the simplicity. Number one, leaving out processed foods, right. like very easy. There, there are very few people, no matter all the extreme diets, you know, mm -hmm. from, from, you know, uh, vegetarian to vegan to plant-based, mm -hmm. there's now a carnivore diet, or there's all kinds of Atkins, all kinds of stuff, but mm -hmm. almost nobody will say eat processed foods, right? <laughs> that, right. That's one thing. If there's right. anything anybody can agree on, it's you know, right. to process foods. Yeah. And so I would say that's number one, right? So before even getting into what's good, let's at least mm -hmm. agree on what is not really nourishing ourselves and nourishing our babies, right? right. Because right. processed food in a way is not really food. There's food mm -hmm. and then you add certain things. Packaged, and you yeah. So mm -hmm. number one, very simple processed mm -hmm. food. That also has an effect on the mind, by the way. That's not just for the body. There's a mm -hmm. certain clarity of mind and a certain peace that will come more when we're mm -hmm. not eating processed food. Why? It's just like if a plant needs water, we don't pour gasoline or we don't pour water mm -hmm. and we add red coloring to make it look nice the plant doesn't want that it's not good for the so plant that's what the marketers want you know that's what marketers they want exactly label right vegetable of fruit into it but yeah. there's no fruit in yeah. it i saw i saw some advertisement that says you know we do this to the fruit you know maybe yeah. some gmo modification or something it makes it makes lettuce greener it makes squash yellower i said like, i don't want more yellow squash you know exactly. i want what it looks like right. it's not it's, it's not for my eyes yeah. it's for my body so yeah. number 1 is cutting out processed foods and number 2 the corollary of that is eating plenty of fresh whole foods fruits and vegetables in particular mm -hmm. if everybody just follows these two simple things cutting right. out processed foods plenty mm -hmm. of fresh fruits and vegetables i really think half the diseases in this world would go away Exactly. And food is medicine, they rightly put it. And it? people just let themselves go and they land up with somebody like you saying, save yeah. me, but it's too late. And yeah. if we could start off early and all yeah. we do is simplify and not fall yeah. into the marketing tactics. So right. Right. Thing, and especially for mothers that feel like they go for the quick meal, you know, because they're yeah. tired. Yeah. So they tap into that. Yeah. Um, and they're like, yeah, just this is easy. Let's do it. But yeah. there's also an easier way of doing healthy food. And that's yeah. something that we will do in our next session. In fact, we have one coming up with um, Pooja and we'll be going like live. We'll be actually cooking in our kitchens together. Oh, wow. I'm yeah. excited about that. Yeah. But yeah, so rightfully said on nutrition. That's that's so important that, you know, I think like what we do is what our kids do, you know, right. basically, especially with a mother, you know, like that. Watching. You, that presence, that, mm -hmm. that safety, and everything you do is what your kids do. So <clears throat> you were talking before about eating the leftovers. You know, I, I think it's important to make good meals for yourself. Yeah, you know, exactly. <laughs> it's like, you know, when you fly on an airplane, they're like, if there's an emergency, the oxygen mask drops, put yourself exactly. on and then put it uh -huh. on your kids. Otherwise you might pass out before you can get to your Right, child. and it so often happens that even with our own circle and then we talk when all, our, all the moms meet, that's always the thing they're tired. And yeah. when I'm like, did you eat? Did you like, when did you eat? I yeah. was just waiting for everything to be done. Yeah. I had to like meal prep, feed them, put them to bed and I'm eating at the end. But by that time, they're so burnt out. But then they're also screaming and yelling because it's the hangry, right? Like you're yeah. hangry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, makes sense. So that's wonderful to know about nutrition. And uh, when you, when we talk about nutrition, so we covered about the food, but also nutrition of mind is yes. an important role. Yeah. Like what are we feeding um, to yeah. our brain? It's huge. And and mm -hmm. this, what we're doing here, Mom mm -hmm. Power 360 and Health Revolution, 
and all mm -hmm. of us together, this is nutrition of the mind, right? So everybody right. who signed up for this, everybody who's here mm -hmm. understands that our, our perspective is important. You know, having some clarity is important. Just mm -hmm. pressing pause for a second, stepping back and say, hey, wait a second. What's really going on here? What's really important? Let me get some perspective. That's mm -hmm. nutrition of the mind. Not everybody does that. Everybody's just one foot in front of the other, just keeping on going. Right. And you don't know where that path goes. It can head off a cliff. Right. So, right. I mean, that's exactly why we started this. Um, because yeah. I was watching people on autopilot. And at times when I would be on autopilot, unless yeah. I would consciously draw myself back and be like, wait, yeah. let's yeah. pause. Where yeah. are we going with all these things? And yeah. who are we surrounding ourselves with? Are we having positive conversation? Or do yeah. we have negative people in our circle? It all affects. Like we're hearing somebody talk ill of somebody. Like it, caught, it immediately affects us. And it almost brainwashes us to talk yeah. in the same way and behave so as they say you're uh, some of five five people you hang out with yes and it's, it's so important that we surround ourselves with positive people and find our tribe and that's one of the efforts that we do here at mom power 360 so people can yeah. reach out to each other and, and find that person who pushes them that little bit extra to be the yeah. best yeah very critical so, and the next thing uh, we're talking about in your four list is movement. So let's get into the movement. Um, so when you say movement, is it about like exercise? Like everyone's like, oh, I have to go to gym. Some people right. are like, I don't have time to go to gym. Right. <laughs> uh, but there are different right. ways that you can still incorporate movement into there your are. daily life. So. There are. And mm -hmm. movement, I think... It, every Every time I talk one of the four engines, I always say this is one of the biggest ones. I mean, they're all huge, but movement is so critical because I think there are a lot of aspects of movement that we don't think about. Like you said, movement is often called exercise, mm -hmm. which is great. We all, Exercise is great. It moves the body, the circulatory system, gets your endorphins going, you feel good. But the truth is not everybody's going to do it and not everybody's going to do it, you know, an hour a day, every week, every day of the week and things like that. Life so, happens. Mm -hmm. Exercise, right. If you can do exercise, great. If you can do it at home, great. Absolutely. I highly recommend it. Also remember that there is much more. For example, range of motion mm -hmm. is, is a huge thing. What is range of motion? It's simply saying, okay, my elbow can do this, so I'm going to do it. Because I have that function, because I have that capacity, I'm going to use it. A very mm -hmm. small one is this joint. Yeah. Because I have it, I'm going to use it. It might sound silly, but you don't know how many people later in life, their whole their hands hurt. Exactly. They haven't yeah. used all the function in their joints. Another right. big one is the hips. How many people do we see in the ER who have fallen and their hip hurts or they have a hip fracture? Why? Mm -hmm. Because our hips have a tremendous range of motion, but we right. hardly use it. You know, it's yeah. just a little bit this way and that way just to walk. And yeah. we don't use it. Right. So, you know, it's real the neck is another important one. It's really important important to remember, and we'll get to this in the next engine, but how closely the body and the mind are related. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't think about those kinds of things, just remember that the more you move your body through its mm -hmm. full range of motion, the more you mm -hmm. loosen up your mind, you get your blood flowing, and you feel that flexibility in your life, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just a physical flexibility, it's your mental flexibility and openness. So that's number two, right? So there's exercise, but then there's range of motion, which is huge. Mm -hmm. Another big one, Lakshmi, I see, that literally heals diseases. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've seen people with chronic diseases considered incurable that heals it, moving your emotions. Okay. Huge. Things, things yeah. that happened to us when we were kids, things right. that happened to us decades ago that we mm -hmm. were told, Oh, suck it up. Don't cry. You know, just, just get on, you know, and the parents quickly dry our tears. Nobody wants to see that. Don't cry. Don't cry. Come on. It's, it's your birthday. Yeah. Just get out there. And you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. These little things that build up in the psyche over time, they show up in the body. I've mm -hmm. seen people heal from Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, cancer, innumerable autoimmune diseases, especially mm -hmm. autoimmune diseases I found is susceptible to this. Right. Early childhood memories and suppressions. And when they bring this out, when they finally release it, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like, you know, a world. Yeah. backpack of metal taken off of them. Right. So, and it's, huge the childhood trauma how people process it and how it affects um yes i mean that's a very fascinating subject for me that i've been yeah. like researching even with joe dispenza's book yeah. yes. this book called toxic emotions 
Yes. Um, and it was yeah. very fascinating to see how our emotions just impacts us. And we don't even realize why we are hurting here. Why are we hurting in our shoulders, in our knee? It shouldn't yeah. be like, I'm still young, but then it's yeah. the emotions. Um, and uh, yes, and mothers being in this core, again, all the relationship, whether yes. it's the, with their spouse, with the parents, with the in-laws, yeah. with their own children, because yeah. it's a lot of interpersonal relationship and it's yeah. the art of, in a way, yeah. Yeah. Um, to master and to let go of things that you're not in control of yeah. and not to take it on. And a lot of mothers do take it on emotionally. Yeah. And then yeah. that leads to, you know, the downgrade of the health and various conditions. So that's and beautifully said. It usually is women in our society, in our global society, it's usually women who are mm -hmm. more emotionally sensitive and more emotionally yeah. expressive and more emotionally open. So mm -hmm. women receive all of that you know even if somebody doesn't say it, you feel it and you receive yeah. it and you hold mm -hmm. it in your system and you mm -hmm. hold it for your kids you hold it for you know your partner you hold it for your parents you hold it for your friends you hold it for the society yeah. and then you know all the, the physiological things that women have to deal with all of this is held mm -hmm. and we see it all the time like if you look at mm -hmm. um uh, things like depression or depressed mood like you can see so many people that are just kind of walking through life, especially women once their kids start to grow up. And I think yeah. part of that is this, you know, holding yeah. all of these emotions and not yeah. having a way to release it. Right, right. And that's an important point. Like again, with mothers who are so invested and when kids reach a point where they don't need us anymore, it's like, it's good. it hits people like a big brick. It's like, wait a second. Now, what do I do with myself? Yeah. And that's something that we also focus on Mom Power 360 is that, yes, you can be a great mother, a wonderful wife, but you need to invest in yourself and not relate your joy completely to others. So you can find your source of joy and happiness in other things. So when time comes, which naturally it will, your children yeah. will fly off uh, and you should be prepared where you're emotionally comfortable being in that space and not rely on other validations. Yeah. So, yeah. I'll, can I tell you a quick story, a small story yeah. that my father mm -hmm. uh, passed away in August, just a few months ago, right? Just tell you about that, huh? And my mother now has to answer for the first time in her, she's in her seventies, has mm -hmm. to answer for the first time in her life. Like, like, who am I yeah. if my kids don't really need me? And if my husband, I don't need to yeah. be there for my husband, like, what do I want to do? And right. she actually just went to India. She's in Bangalore now. She left from Washington nice. just okay. a week or two ago. And she's so happy. It's yeah. like that little girl is there because she's starting to discover, oh, yeah, this is what I want to do. I don't have to check yeah. with anybody. I don't need to do anything. And right. and and the, the point I'm trying to make, she's obviously a mother, right? She's my mother. The point I'm trying to make is that makes me happy in a way that I haven't been to right. see my mother doing that, which I've never seen for decades, right? So for right. all the mothers out there, how happy you are. Don't think that you're taking time away from your kids, you know? Right, right. And you are genuinely joyful because you are growing, doing what you want, mm -hmm. that your kids will feel something different in their life. That's really exactly. important. They don't need a busy mom who's constantly behind them, but they need a happy mom who's right. content and who's just there when they need right. her. Right, right. Um, Right. So, yes. And that's one of the like mistakes that I see so many people do. And at times yeah. when I would fall into it, then I have to yeah. remind myself, wait a second, I need to make sure that if I, I'm happy because they see me and they pick up on my expression, my emotions. Um, yeah. So we need to tap into that with doing what brings me joy. So, and that's that's also part of movement. That's another part of movement. We talked about exercise, range of motion. We talked about emotional movement creative movement right which is what you're doing with mom power 360 it's like mm -hmm. what do i have to say like what burns within me that i want to express that i want to do mm -hmm. when you do that your whole family does that you know because right. when your mother does that it's just so powerful in her family so that's creative mm -hmm. that's another aspect of it mm -hmm. and finally tying all of these things together is our presence moving our breath mm -hmm. right so so many people take shallow breaths shallow breaths right <laughs> and it's just right. happening up here yes uh -huh. but you're actually the way the breath happens is the diaphragm contracts which means that it goes down from the the bottom part of the chest it goes down into the abdomen and the thorax expands and mm -hmm. that creates a negative pressure and all this air comes in 
So mm-hmm. if you're not really contracting that and opening up that chest, it's just as, and if you look in the ER, everybody who breathes in a shallow way is uh-huh. basically anxious, yeah. right? It's basically mm-hmm. anxiety. And yeah. that's, that's the basis of pranayama, which is, right. you know, you breathe deeply and fully, the mind relaxes, breathe shallow and fast, the mind um, becomes anxious. Right, so, right just think about everything we talked about in movement. I mean, we did it so quickly, but if you attend to movement, your life changes. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Your breathing, your range of motion, your creativity, your emotions, your family will not recognize you after three weeks. (laughs) It's just like getting up and just going for a walk, put on some good music, good podcast with some positive messaging, totally changes how you function throughout the day. So even though it feels like, oh, do I have to go for a walk? But giving that extra push yeah. and to take that first step and not letting any of the other thought comes through, yeah. that definitely makes a huge impact on each day, but also leading to the whole year. And yeah. then you have a good life. But yeah, yeah. simple, small little baby steps. It's so small thing. It's small uh-huh. thing. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about, so that was movement. So our third thing, yeah. which is connection. So, connection. so what do you mean by connection? So connection, there are three aspects of it, okay? One is, again, what we're doing here, connecting with others, right? Mm-hmm. You are creating a community for mothers, right? Mm-hmm. Who have so many things on their plate. And mm-hmm. you realize that, wait a second, we are like one of the dominant forces on this planet <laughs> as mothers. So yeah. where is our community to talk about these things, to get together? That's connection, connecting with others sharing mm-hmm. your story, hearing other people's story, hearing your story in other people's stories, right? I mean, we're all kind of walking the same path to some extent. Mm-hmm. So, and we're all social beings. You can feel other people's emotions. You can see it in their eyes. You can see it in their goals. You can see it in their behavior. So just sharing that experience and realizing that we are connected all through each other. So that's that's really important in, in deep ways, not just, you know, sometimes you go to work and you have your your work connection, which is like the email and the formal meeting. Nobody's really saying what they think. You know, it's it's that's not really connection. It's not just the physical presence. Meaningful. It's actually deep connection. Yes, meaningful. Mm-hmm. Actually, sharing what you what you think and what you feel, right. as we are doing here. Right. This is right. connection, connecting right. with others. And we're that's social why. beings. And the craziest part is women, especially now in today's world with social media. Yeah. I feel like that is the connection, but that's not yeah. and it's just something yeah. that's there. But 90% like a feeling bad about yourself because everyone's comparing with each other. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons when we, when I decided to do it post COVID, I was like, man, we need connection with real people. We need to bring people face to face. And that's when I hosted the conference. Everyone's yeah. like conference, like how I'm like, I don't know how, but we're going to bring people together. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want another set of like online thing. But now, of course, yeah. we're gravitating to, well, you know, partly for reason being like we want to bring in that conversation, which is important. But again, the primary thing is we want women to meet mm-hmm. each other, connect with each other, get to know each other, share their stories, make them feel like they're not alone in this journey. Because a lot of times they feel like they're the only one who are going through something. But it's quite common, uh, yeah. whether it's a sleepless night with the kid or, you know, issues with certain with children, their behavior or whatever it could be, like hundreds yeah. of things that women go yeah. through, work-life balance. And sometimes just talking to another mom yeah. who understands them, who's or in the same boat, just puts everything into a different perspective. So. I mean, totally. I mean, the of the few children I saw in the ER last night, it was mostly mm-hmm. their moms who were there with them. You know, so Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, there you have it. I remember one mom, uh, Mm -hmm. she was saying, uh, she's saying, um, and I said, child's okay. You know, we we treated the child, say it's safe to go home and follow up with your primary care doctor in a couple of days. And then she was just like, I'm going to be up all night. He's like, you know, he's because he has this. And I mean, that's what it is, you know? Yeah. I mean, I was up like pretty much whole night yesterday because my son wasn't feeling well. Yeah. Right. And a part of me that I was giving him nebulizer and yeah. he can breathe better. And I was like, forget it. I'm not sleeping on my mind. As well. yeah. <laughs> but then morning, it's like, oh, I have to wake up. You yeah. still have to wake up for your other yeah. children and other responsibility. And yeah. sometimes it's just like to be able to talk to another mother saying like, 
my night was crappy too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 100%. yeah. So that's, that's connecting with others. Mm -hmm. The second part of connection, which is huge mm -hmm. is connecting with the planet. And I think this is often overlooked. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, we are extensions of this planet. We are made from the food on this planet, mm -hmm. right? Just like the plant is made from the nutrients in the soil. If you mm -hmm. take the planet away, we go away also, you know? So we are extensions of the planet. So what does that mean? We need to be plugged into the planet, directly contacting, just like you plug in your charger into the wall socket. We need to be plugged into the planet. What does that mean? Feet in the soil, direct contact. We know that when our feet touch the soil, there is electron transfer between the body and the planet, which mm -hmm. reduces inflammation, right? Mm -hmm. So this is, of course, in India, you know, decades ago, everybody's walking around barefoot. When I lived in Kerala, I was running around barefoot. It was awesome. Best thing because ever. That's, you're supposed to, your feet are actually shoes. The bottom of your feet become hard and, and they're like shoes. But now we think we're super advanced with all the fancy shoes and cushioning and everybody's getting back problems and knee problems because you're not getting that uneven you know, stabilization with your hips. They're like suspension systems that are not being used. The shoe is doing all the work. That's so, very interesting. I never thought of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, that's, mm. it, it's like a car, you know, it, you have suspension in the car. Why? Because the road is uneven, right? Mm -hmm. But if you put shoes on that car and it never needs yeah. anything, then the suspension doesn't work. The suspension in our case is our joints right? Mm -hmm. It just becomes stiff because you're not getting that unevenness and you're not getting that, that flow, that decreased inflammation from connection with the planet. So whenever you can get outside barefoot. Mm -hmm. Number two, fresh air in the lungs, right? I, I was in India a few months ago. I know there's a lot of pollution in many areas there, mm -hmm. uh, here too, in the cities, whenever you can get to a place where there's a lot of green, where you're breathing fresh oxygen, there are what I call phytonicides in the trees themselves that are known to kill off uh, bacteria, to mm -hmm. kill off cells that are not functioning well, to decrease inflammation. So mm -hmm. we just call that what? Forest bathing. We just call that being in nature. Right, but right. that direct contact of fresh air into the lungs, sunlight on the skin, direct contact, right? Mm -hmm. And finally, I always say eyes on the sky, direct contact, eyes on. We're so used to looking like this, yeah. all the things, one, two, a hundred things, right? So if you look in your background and my background, we can pick out so many different things. But if you look at the sky, it's one. Wow. I'm, Even... I'm a big time sky watcher. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, now I know why I feel good when I go lay in my hammock. That's my favorite place to be and always come out feeling good. And now it makes sense why, you know, the sun is working around it. That's exactly right. Because when you look here, your mind is separating a hundred things when you look there mm -hmm. it's just at rest immediately yeah. you know mm -hmm. so that's connecting with the planet mm -hmm. feet in the soil you know sun on the skin fresh air in the lungs eyes on the sky literally directly touching right. so that's the second aspect of connection we talked about connecting with others connecting with the planet and the third one of course connecting with ourselves mm -hmm.